Hello everyone, Ronnie J here again, and uh, in the previous video I talked about getting a reliable stream host provider, and the one I talked about was Live 365 because uh, its hosting package or packages include licensing. Now in this video I'm going to talk about licensing in more detail, and this information is information that you should take to heart and comply with it because your station, if you're streaming certain types of content uh, on the internet, doesn't matter whether you go through Live 365 or some other uh, host provider that doesn't include licensing in this package, you must be licensed, uh, depending on the type of content that you're going to be uh, streaming or playing. So I'm going to talk about those. So what I've done here, I've written a couple of articles on the uh, internet um, radio station.com website, and I'm going to refer you to those. And I'm going to glean through a few points in those articles and you can read them for yourself. So go to the uh, internet uh, radio station.com website. I'll have a link uh, displayed on the screen here for you now. And when you get there, uh, let's scroll down to the area where you see recent articles. Now, by the time, you know, of course, these articles are going to be I'll be adding more content to the website, so you're not going to see the articles appear in this order, so you have to search for them, but they'll be there. Uh, the first article I want to talk about is one entitled, Do You Need a License for Internet Radio? And that question really has already been answered, but I want to show you the article itself so you can refer to it. So going into the article, I break things down a little bit here where... Uh, there are three sections here that uh, would determine whether or not you need a license. And it depends on the type of content that you're going to be streaming or playing. And even with those types of content, depending on certain circumstances, you may still need a license for that. So I'm going to read right from the article. Under talk radio, you have something to say and you want people to hear it. It's your opinion and you don't need licensing coverage to say what's on your mind. However, see, there's always a however. Talk radio is often accompanied by sound bits and music. So yes, you want to make sure you've got coverage that's licensing or you have secured uh, direct rights even for a single 30 second clip of a song. That's very, very important. Now, if you have a talk show where you're not going to be playing any copyrighted sound clips, then you're good to go. Now, what about sports radio? Some of you may be doing talk shows or podcasts that involve talking about sports, right? Uh, and as it's written here, you could talk about sports 24-7. You don't need licensing coverage if you just discuss sports. But as with talk radio... Clips from last night's big game and even the occasional song often accompany sports radio. So you need to be sure that you're covered there as well. So in a nutshell, it's not so much the talk radio and the sports radio. It's if you're going to be accompanying those two formats with copyrighted sound clips. So you need coverage there. You need to be licensed. Now, here's the big one. Music. The most common type of content that gets broadcast on radio is music. Streaming music on the internet requires having the rights to both the composition and the sound recording. One is for the person or persons that compose the notes and the lyrics, while the other is from the singer and musicians on the recording itself. Unless you're playing royalty-free music or you have secured direct rights to that music from either the owner or those rights or the representative, you need licensing to cover all those songs. There's no way around that. To top that off, there are certain rules you need to follow under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act or DMCA. And to read more about the programming rules included in the DMCA, check out my post entitled, What is DMCA. So we're going to go to that next. So read this article and it's pretty straightforward. It's short, but it does answer the question. Do you need a license for internet radio? Now let's go back to the homepage and let's go down 
to that section we just left. Let's look at the other article that talks about DMCA compliance. And that's this article right here. So we'll click on that and go on there. And it's also a very short article. It's straightforward and it's to the point. And it gives you an idea of what you need to be doing, what you need to do when you're streaming um, music. So there's a definition up here as to what the uh, Digital Millennium Copyright Act is. Read that for yourself. But there are basically 10 points that you need to have a, a general understanding of. The first one here is entitled DMCA Performance Complement. A webcaster must comply with the Sound Recording Performance Complement, which prohibits a webcaster, that's you and I who stream music, copyrighted music, which prohibits the webcaster from transmitting within any given three hour period. A, more than three different songs from the same album and more than two such songs are transmitted consecutively or B, four different songs by the same artist or four different songs from the same compilation and more than three such songs are transmitted consecutively. So this is a rule that you must follow. And the beauty of this is that when you get with uh, Live 365, the way their system is set up, it almost ensures that you're in compliance with this first point here. And the way you get around that is to upload a whole lot of songs and make sure those songs don't all come from the same album. I mean, you can have an entire album on your, on your playlist that you upload, but you want to have a lot of songs uploaded so that the Live 365 system can cipher through them all and ensure that uh, point number one is being complied with. Number two, no prior announcements. A webcaster must not publish an advanced program schedule that discloses the titles of specific songs, the names of albums, the names of artists to be transmitted with exception. And I've seen websites in the past where they would have on their website a schedule that publishes what's going to be playing in advance. Uh, you don't want to do that. It's okay to have a schedule to say that uh, you're playing, um, say, hip hop from 8 to 12, and you're playing um, easy listening music from 12 to 3, smooth jazz from 3 to 7. You know, you can do that, but you can't publish, you know, the name and title of, of a song, and or songs rather, and give people advance notice as to what's playing. You don't want to do that. That breaks... Uh, rule number two. Rule number three, programming rules. And this is a big one. A webcaster's programming must also comport with the following rules. Point A, archive programming. An archive program must be at least five hours long and it cannot be available for more than two weeks. In other words, there are individuals who actually record uh, their programs and they archive them on a server. You can do that, but you don't want those archive programs to be uh, more than five hours long. Point B, loop programming. A continuously loop program must be at least three hours long. And that makes sense. So let's say if you have some pre-recorded content where you're playing uh, three hours worth of, uh, of different songs, and you just have it running in a loop. There's stuff that'd be one big MP3 file, but you know you can do that, or you can have a uh, a a clock wheel set up for that, right? Or have a PAL script running that does that too. But as long as it you know within that three hour time frame, you're in compliance with rule number one up here. Okay, that's what they're really saying here, loop programming. Because a person might not have a whole lot of songs uploaded to their server, but they have enough. They have about, say, three hours worth of it. So as long as you, if you're looping that and you're playing the same stuff over and over again every three hours, just make sure that you're not playing, say, two or three songs that come from the same album. You know, you take a look at point number one up here and make sure that you're in compliance down here with uh, loop programming. 
Point C, rebroadcast programming. A rebroadcast is an identifiable program that contains songs which are played in a predetermined order other than an archive or continuous program and is less than one hour in length and can be transmitted no more than three times in any two-week period when the program has been publicly announced in advance with exception and no more than four times in a two-week period when the program is one hour or more in length with with exception. Uh, if, if you're doing any type of rebroadcasting, uh, just make sure that they're not being transmitted more than three times per week uh, in any two week period and that uh, and no more than four times in any two week period. And you're good to go there. Point number four, prohibition of false affiliation. The webcaster must not knowingly contemporaneously play or synchronize a song to visual images in a manner that is likely to cause confusion as to the affiliation of the copyright owner of the sound recording or artist with the webcaster or a particular product or service. Now to break that down, what that's, what that's saying here, uh, let's say you have a song and you have it uh, correctly titled and you have the correct artist attached to that song. So you're good there. The title and the artist are fine. But suppose that you have attached to that some album art and that album art does not reflect uh, the song and the artist. And so that can cause confusion. Let's say if you're playing a song by Marvin Gaye, you know, what's going on, right? But the album art attached to that song is, uh, you know, Steely Dan, for example. A person can be tuned into your station and they hear the song, What's Going On by Marvin Gaye, but they're seeing album art, Gotcho, by Steely Dan. See, that's confusing. So you want to make sure you're in compliance there as well. Point number five, cooperate to defeat scanning. The webcaster must cooperate to prevent, to the extent feasible listeners from automatically scanning the webcaster's transmission in order to select a particular song to be transmitted with exception. This is referring to hacking and I haven't had that experience where individuals are able to, uh, they write programs and bots where they can somehow scan your transmissions and take control of your playlist, so to speak. And if they can do that, then see that takes you out of compliance that could take out of compliance. So I haven't had that experience. But if you will, with the Live 365, you don't have to worry about that. Point number six, limit duplication by recipient. The webcaster cannot affirmatively cause or encourage the duplication of songs. And if the webcaster uses technology that allows them to limit the ability to duplicate songs directly, in a digital format. The webcaster must set such technology to limit the ability to duplicate songs to the extent permitted by the technology. This is something that you would have to worry about with Live 365 either. Point number seven, no transmission of bootleg copies. This is a big one. The webcaster must use sound recordings that are legally sold to the public or authorized for performance by the copyright owner of the sound recording and that they that and that are legally manufactured. In other words, this is saying here that you can't find these these websites that allow you to download uh, free MP3s, or you go on YouTube and you find um, a video that's playing a particular soundtrack, and you use a media converter to download that video and use that very same media converter or any media converter to to convert that midi that uh, video into mp3 format and now you have a song you don't want to do that you want to every song that's in your playlist you want to make sure that you've purchased it because it's the right thing to do again these artists they work hard at their craft and if you're using bootlegged copies of music then you're you're stealing so Pay the money. You know, you can go buy, go on Amazon, 
and that's where I, I purchased my, my music. You can buy a song for 99 cents, and it's great quality. And by doing that, you're giving the artist their dues. And that's what they're saying here. You don't want to have uploaded to your playlist bootleg copies of, of music. Pay for the music. Point number eight, accommodate technical protection measures. The webcaster must accommodate and cannot interfere with the transmission of technical measures that are widely used by copyright owners of sound recordings to identify or protect copyrighted works if such measures can be transmitted without imposing substan substantial cost on the webmaster or result in perceptible oral or visual degradation of the digital signal, with exception. This falls into the category where uh, th there are bots that scan different radio broadcasts. YouTube, YouTube has it locked down. If you play, say, or if you attach a copyrighted song to, say, one of your videos, YouTube's on it within the first 20, 30 seconds, and they're going to flag your, your video as a, a violation of copyright. And it's the same thing here is what they're talking about, that you don't want to interfere or try to circumvent uh, what different agencies do to protect the creators of that content, of those songs. They may scan uh, to see if uh, you're legal. For example, you know, in other words, they come across your radio station and they want to do some checking to see if uh, you're legally broadcasting or if you're in, in um, violation of these, these uh, rules up here. So you don't want to interfere with that. Just leave them alone. Let them do what they want to do. And my advice to you is that you purchase your songs. You pay for them. You don't download bootleg copies. Because I do believe they have ways of finding out if a song is not really is, is bootleg. So you know you, you want to be safe and sorry, right? Uh, number two, just um, upload a, a lot of songs up to Live 365 and let them work their magic. And I'll talk about these things in later videos, and I'll even show you. And they go a long way in keeping you compliant because they won't license you I believe that they'll cancel your license I haven't had that experience if you're not in compliance if you discover doing something underhanded and they even have a, a certain set of criteria that you must follow the ninth point here is and this is this is very important too the webcaster must display the title of the song okay the title of the album and the featured recording artist to the listener okay so those three things must be complied with so if you have say some a whole bunch of mp3s you want to make sure that when you uh, give them a title then you'd want to have the name of the uh, song the name of the uh, the artist so I'm gonna go back to my Marvin Gaye example I have a bunch of MP3s, so I have the title of the song, what's going on, hyphen Marvin Gaye. When I upload that song up to my live 365 server, what I will see there, I'll see there in the title box, what's going on, in the artist box, Marvin Gaye, and in the album box, the album that it came from, but if, if it's not fair, that's very easy to find out. You can do a search on Google, you can go to Amazon.com and get it there and then you save it in your playlist and you're automatically uh, in compliance. So when that song is placed in the queue to be played on the Live 365 website, point number nine, you're in compliance. And I always do the extra step. Now, all I only do when I place my songs in the queue that have the the title, the name of the artist, and the album. I also upload the album cover, the, the album art. 
that goes with that particular song. And it looks nice. In fact, let's see if I can find something up here that will show that. And this is the WRP radio station profile. If you scroll down, see this is what the listeners will see if they go here. And they can even click on this a player here and listen to the stream from here. But see, notice how I have album art attached to each, each of my songs. And it takes a little bit, just a, some extra time to get album art on your songs if they don't have them. But what you don't want uploaded onto your Live 365 server is a song that doesn't have the uh, album that the song comes from. Let's say, for example, I uploaded a song by David Sanborn, and it has the name of the song, Smoke Gets In Your Eyes, and it shows the artist of that song. But it says album unknown, for example. Well, you need to find out what the, uh, the album in which the song came from. And that's easy to do. Just take the extra time to do that. And I also include the album art. Some songs, especially ones that I... That, 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 uh, I buy new. The old ones I have in my library that goes years back, a lot of those don't have the album art, art, art attached to them. Some of them, of them do. So I have to find the album art, download it, and upload it. But uh, I take the time to do this because this is what visitors will see. I see other uh, radio stations on within the Live 365 uh, system. Well, they'll have uh, the song, the artist, and um, the album isn't displayed there, but they don't have any album art attached to it. There will be some placeholder there. That's, I guess it's okay, but I think if you're gonna make it look real nice, do this. Always attach the album art to your, your songs. And this is what it looks like. And point number nine was the last point. Point number 10 is a duplicate of point number one. So I need to take this out. But I think you get the idea. So please visit the website, check out these two articles. And again, you can do a search for them. There's a nice little search box that I have on the, um, the website right up here. Let's open it up and you can type in DCMA and read the rules, okay? And so that's it about DCMA and being in compliance and licensing. This is Ronnie J. See you guys in the next video.